the kindness of strangers and my own team itself and the way they talk about the work and how they love some of the things that we do even when I don't have the energy to. Um, that gives me a lot of hope. It triggers a lot that, that sort of teach us what we need to change. But we are, there's a new concept. It's not that new for people like us maybe, but the, the notion of glimmers. Mm. So we've got triggers and then glimmers. What are the glimmers every day that you can hold on to? The glimmers of change in people's eyes, the conversation you're having with a naysayer and then you've said something and you think they've just got that. You know, look, pay attention for those because they are, that's food. The people that we have in our organisation, Disability Rights UK, the sh shared sense of value and purpose and the world that we are working towards. I'm very fortunate to have some just, well, an amazing group of individuals who are just so passionate about bringing about the change. And I feel very privileged. I feel hopeful because I see more examples. I also see negative examples, but I see more positive examples of this new vocabulary of leadership that's that's coming through. So that's what keeps me keeps me hopeful. The change in mindset and the shift and then being able to just just to say, let me put my hand up and say, yeah, I've struggled. I've, you know, I've had challenges, but I'm here now and anyone can. Quite often, you know, when I share a lot of my reality, I just get trolled. People say that can't be true. We don't believe you. So for me, validation is, has become something that has given me hope and comfort community who do we surround ourselves where do we get solidarity from where can i go to serve at a really difficult time who do i go with just to cry who do i go with just to say this is what happens to minoritized group and have that sense of community or just have fun within that space i think for me finding other people who in whatever capacity they're able, are trying to be involved in this, are trying to think about it, are trying to create spaces where people can feel safe with each other. Um, you know, it, it's one of the things that I try to go back to a lot. Continuous learning, we can never stop learning. It's almost like if we stop, we've come to the end. So it's like continuous. I'm not saying that it just, it's not going to just stop like that because it's so embedded, it's so deep. So we have to continue and it's just part of the, the journey of where we are at this point in our lives, but also in, in, in the point of in society. So for me, it's like a journey. I'm going to keep continuing. Christians really are starting to take seriously their kind of social obligation. They are not seeing, well, they, some more enlightened leaders and organisations are not just seeing themselves as in a market but as part of the fabric of life and communities and society. And so therefore there's much more openness and conversations about that, which is great. And ESG, for whatever people think about it, is giving it a spotlight. Nothing about us without us. That's what keeps me hopeful, is, is organisations driving that mantra and also living by it and practising it. Um, conversations like this, keep me hopeful because it's a conversation where Teeth and his team have very cleverly and then very intentionally included people of very different backgrounds, of very different ages. Kind of overarching it's my faith um, and I think it's because my faith has given me everything I need and when I say everything I need, my faith has given me my husband, you know, the way we we met and we existed. I, I believe like it was my faith and, and that was given to me. Ultimately, people want to do the right thing, ultimately. You know, we live in a complex and challenging world. We look at the news and, you know, we would be forgiven to feel heartbroken by some of the things that we see, whether that's in politics and the erosion of democracies, whether it's about war. And and yeah, I choose, it's, you know, I, I think we all have default personalities, but I also think the way we think is partly predicated on our ability to exercise choice as a muscle. 
And I choose very deliberately to believe that ultimately people want to do the right thing. Two years ago, we were talking about intersectionality being talked about more, hopefully, in neurodiversity um, and neuroinclusion, and look where we are now. We're all looking for answers, and in some ways, we're going to realise that the only way in this is to unite and notice that everything is interconnected. And what affects me affects you as well, in one way or another. We're all karmic creatures, right? So that, that keeps me hopeful.